Hello and welcome back to another daily Bible reading and discussion. Yeah, we're about running out of Luke here. Yeah, we read and discuss. That's what we do here. That's what we do. We're not trying to be too fancy, just give you some things to think about, let you encounter Jesus along the way. So what we'd like you to do is we'd like you to heart, put a heart down there. Care, comment, share. Mm -hmm. Did it. He did it. He's there. He's there. <laughs> uh, not because we think we're doing anything special. It's Jesus is doing it. Yep. But we'd like more people to take a little time out and See Jesus as He really is. What's important to Him? Yep. And these are great places to start. So Jesus is going to, speaking of Jesus, He is going to Jesus. continue His discipleship discussion. He can't up, be stopped. Upside down kingdom discussion. Mm -hmm. He takes what He knows people struggle with. You know, a lot of times we see it apparently where the, He knows the Pharisees mm -hmm. see He's eating with this. They're grumbling. He attacks them. Well, He knows our hearts. He knows yeah. His disciples. So there are times He'll bring mm -hmm. up stuff and they'll go, what? And, and why not deal with the things that are the real things? Yeah. I mean, of course he would. It's easy for us to deal with theoretical, you know, things that will never really have any meaning or apply. I, I, I had a, when I first started preaching, which yeah. is long before your time, uh, <laughs> uh, there was a joke going around, I'll simplify it, where the preacher got at me preached about one thing. He was in Kentucky, and, and he preached about horse racing. And they said, you can't do that. This is Kentucky. He preached about tobacco. He said, you can't do that. In Kentucky. He said, well, what can I preach about? He said, how about African witch doctors? We don't have any of those around here. That's funny. It is. <laughs> Pull yourself together. <laughs> Jesus would have pro preached yeah. about the, the derby. All right, verse 17, chapter 17, verse 1. And he said to his disciples, temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one who through they come. Mm. That's a huge, first of all, acknowledgement of reality. We usually beat up on the people who come under the influence of the ones who are the instigators. No. Temptations to sin will come. Meaning, I mean, look at life. Just mm -hmm. look, just for a moment, just a moment, step out and look at what's in culture. If Whoa. you want to find something to do that is wrong, you will find it In, in, in religion as well. In religion as well. And, um, it but, Woe to the one whom they come. Man, mm -hmm. don't be a person who's out there throwing out the stumbling blocks. No. Because it would be better for him to have a millstone were hung around his neck, were cast into the sea, and that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. That's pretty you graphic. mean Jesus? Jesus said stuff love, like that? Loving, loving man. Jesus would talk about throwing a millstone around someone's neck? If they're helping people to go to hell, he certainly would. You know, this is basically speaking about drowning someone alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like the mafia used to do. You, <laughs> you got to sleep with the fishes or something. You know, and Jesus is essentially saying that it's not a good place to be. No. So pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. I want to ask a question. How do these? How does this verse relate to the previous verses? How does being a stumbling block and not forgiving people relate to one another. He's always chunking stuff out like that, isn't he? And yeah. forgiveness is one of the most common things that he throws out there, seemingly randomly. And yet, uh, when you, we did the marriage, divorce for marriage thing, where he throws that in there because it's, it's getting down dirty with loving your brother and all yeah. that. But, okay, if we can't be forgiving to people who, who are wanting forgiveness, who are, who are seeking forgiveness, Nothing's going to work ever, but what's the human tendency to hold it over their heads? Yeah, and could that be a stumbling block to somebody? When we talk about what are stumbling blocks? Oh, of course it could. Your lack of forgiving somebody. I've seen it. Oh, I've seen to. it in churches where a lack of two people who one sinned against mm -hmm. the other, legitimately mm -hmm. this person had concern to be angry with them, mm -hmm. and... But when there's true repentance mm -hmm. and forgiveness is not it's had, powerful. it's powerful. But if, the if, lack if they of it, forgive, yeah. it's powerful either way. But when they don't do no. it, the separation that happens. Yeah. Like Fred doesn't speak to Margaret anymore. Well, this is the church. No, they just don't talk. We're going to let that go. Yeah, we're going to let it go. And a lot of times it causes people to leave the church completely. Exactly. Families are influenced and everything like that. But if you see somebody forgive somebody something that... And that doesn't mean emotionally you're just totally dismissing it because emotions are a different thing. But you actually treat them well. That's powerful. I remember when, remember when that um, officer lady went into that young black man's apartment and shot him to death mm -hmm. and she was convicted? Yes. When his brother, he was a, 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 brother. He was a member of the church, 
when his brother got on stand mm -hmm. and said that he forgave. That was powerful. I lost it. Oh. I lost it. I mean, the fact that this person can kill your own brother. And he shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't really have shouldn't done have. it. And he forgave her. Yeah. Man. That's, that's just, no. He's not going to let that come between the two of them in, in the future. And that's, I, that's amazing. I wish Christianity had more of that rep. I was back when they were doing the thing in Yugoslavia yeah. and, and, and got into Herzegovina and Croatia and all these divisions. And, and it was basically Muslim Christian. And um, they, were, they were interviewing this, this person whose whole family had been killed by Muslims. And, and he was talking about how he, he wasn't going to hold that against them. And, and he said, well, he said, I'm a Christian. I don't have any choice. I thought, well, wow. How about that? That's amazing. And that's Must have been thing. listening to Jesus. That's the thing. We sometimes, when it comes to the commands of God, we give our cho we give ourselves too much choice to obey or not. Well, that's one I don't really have to. Mm -hmm. No, there is no choice. No, if somebody asks for forgiveness, we have no choice but to forgive them. Yeah, and be because Jesus says when you pray, mm -hmm. pray. Forgive us of our sins well, like, as I'm we forgive others. I'm going to go to hell because I'm not going to forgive you. <laughs> yeah. And if I have to forgive them, then I'd rather go to hell. Well, yeah. I mean, that's on you. It's like the truth. <laughs> that's what it's got to be. So he says, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive. So this brings back, if he repents, forgive. Now, okay. forgiveness. Semantic stuff. Let's do with that. Yeah. So first of all, there has to be repentance for forgiveness. For Same thing with God. As, for forgiveness has to do with like forgiveness of sins and all that kind of stuff. There has to be repentance. However, there's a similar thing that we could call forgiveness that has to do with how we're going to deal with people who don't ask for forgiveness. Can we hate them and just abuse them and well, mistreat them? Jesus says to love your enemies. Oh, so I'm assuming someone who has done something harmful against mm -hmm. you, that would be the person who's considered mm -hmm. your enemy. Still right? an enemy. I haven't repented. But, but you are to love them. Mm -hmm. So forgiveness has nothing to do with how mm -hmm. you treat somebody. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness has to do with reconciliation. Yes. You guys had a relationship. It was broken, it's broken because of the sin. Forgiveness is to bring this back together. Bring it out here again. However, to live at peace with all men, that's another story. Yep. Now, a lot of times people forgive. I'm going to forgive you, but don't ever talk to me. I'm going to be yeah. still mean to you. <laughs> you didn't forgive what them What if God all. did that to us? I know. And so you must, he says, you must forgive him. And we get more than seven times to make the point on other occasions. Seven like times Warner seven. 80. Whoa. Now the apostles responding <laughs> said, is, Lord, is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> increase our faith. You see, Over this. it takes faith in Jesus and God and trust what they're doing for you. What God has done for me, mm -hmm. I must reciprocate that to others. Compared to what anybody has done against us. What we have done to God in the grand scale of things overwhelms that. Well, remember when the prodigal son is coming back, he says, I have sinned against you in heaven. heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? And heaven is the throne room of God. Mm -hmm. You know, sinned against God himself. Mm -hmm. And it, it, so if God is going to forgive us when we have, I mean, we can't even imagine what all that involves and, and how great it is for the God of heaven to forgive us yeah. and it requiring Jesus for that to happen and we hold out against somebody else come on man well it's like Jesus tells the parable of the um, <clears throat> the servant who had a servant mm -hmm. the servant who owed more than he'll ever be able to pay mm -hmm. the master forgives him but then that servant goes and has a servant who owes him very little in comparison, mm -hmm. in comparison. and won't forgive him mm -hmm. Jesus says, it's not going to turn out good for you. Yeah, no, no, you go beat that guy up. It's a no, please, let's just stop that. Yeah, so the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. So it's a faith thing. It's a faith thing, and Jesus is saying, if you don't think you can do this, I'm telling you, you can. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm telling you, you can do it. So he has confidence in us. Now, this doesn't mean people can't. People could do horrible things to people and emotionally scar them. And, and I understand there's going to have to be modification, but we don't just try to get them all the time and yeah. be nasty. Yeah. But if I will say, though, if there is true, once repentance. again, true repentance and true, and mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. 
Some people want to repent by saying, I'm sorry, sorry. but they're going to still treat you the same way. They're yeah. the same person. But this is genuine. But if this person we can is tell when it's genuine. truly a changed man. Mm -hmm. Or woman. Or woman. How, how can the church accept the Apostle Paul oh. into their midst oh. when he has killed their family, oh. their friends? Not telling them how much he's done. And yet. Barnabas mm -hmm. was saying, no, he is truly a changed mm -hmm. man. That's what repentance is. Repentance isn't just saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, repentance is being a truly changed individual. And you know, you never hear a word about that later on where somebody said, but yeah, that Paul, you know, you never hear another word about it. Nope. Nope. And, you know, when he writes to like the Church of Corinth, he's assuming they know what kind of character he is. Exactly. You know, and he even brings it up. You know what kind of man I was yeah, among you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let that be a positive. I'm yeah. not that man anymore. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you seen the movie The Apostle Paul? I have. Okay, that's a I, cool movie. I actually thought that was probably one of the best mm -hmm. historical renditions of possibly mm -hmm. what would have happened they, with that It's letter. hard to find a good Bible movie, isn't it? I know. It? But uh, at the end, when, it, when they're going to chop his head off. Yeah. I always break up about this one. He sees the people coming to him that he's killed. And they're glad to see him. That's special. Yeah. Will any of you who has a servant, plowing or keeping sheep, say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at the table? Will he rather not say mm -hmm. to him, prepare supper for me, dress properly, mm -hmm. serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded, so you also... When you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This goes oh, all the way back. It just cuts it down, doesn't it? All the way back to the Pharisees continually wanting recognition and reward mm -hmm. from men. And Jesus is warning his disciples, do not, it's, it's, it's more about not what will happen, but mm -hmm. what is your expectation of happening? Yeah. God will reward you. God will bless you. God will, if sure. you humble yourself, but what you're expecting of God. Yeah, we got to be like the prodigal. Yeah. yeah. We don't, hey, we don't deserve anything. I'm an unworthy son. I don't even, not even worthy yeah. to be called a son. And yet the father will not treat us that way, mm -hmm. but we come unworthy. Mm -hmm. He lifts us up. Anything that Jesus asks us to do that we do is not brag worthy. No. And yet he brags on us. And that, that's why I keep going back yeah, to the psalmist. Him brag. <laughs> that's why I keep going back to the psalmist. And the psalmist says, what is man that you, that you hey, think I'm, of us? We don't deserve this. We don't deserve this. Yeah, God, God holds us special. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> all right, on the way to Jerusalem. This is where he's been. He's kind mm -hmm, of uh, making his trip. coming up. Yep. He was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they know something about Jesus, don't they? Yeah, and they're all asking the same thing. And yet, there's going to be one who's different. Uh. When he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Which is interesting. I love mm -hmm. this. He did not cleanse them, and then they went. Mm -mm. They had to trust mm -hmm. that somehow on their way, uh, yeah, something's gonna happen. something was going to change between here and there. Kind of like with Abraham taking mm -hmm. Isaac. The Hebrew author lets us know that yeah. he knew something had to happen. Not sure what. May have to raise him up from the dead, but hey, here I go. you got to trust. And so they trusted Jesus. They trusted him. Um, as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, though, here's the difference. Mm -hmm. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Oh, I got one of those Samaritans stuck in there again. And when Jesus answered, we're not ten cleansed, where are the nine? And this is just so pointed, I think, still to the Jews. Mm -hmm. All that God has done for them, mm -hmm. even when they trust it, and yet... And they're pointing their fingers at the Samaritans. And do they ever come back and truly give Jesus and God the they truth? They deserve to be forgiven. They're the God's people. Yeah. So, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? <laughs> And he said to them, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. So this is what true faith is. It's not mm -hmm. just trusting in God. It's trusting in the whole package. You know, mm -hmm. because the Pharisees, in one sense, if you were asked them, do you trust God? Of course. Oh, yeah, of course. We, do. we go to well, the temple. We do all kinds of stuff. We yeah. tithe. We fast. We do everything. And they did understand the importance of God in mm -hmm. religion. But did they truly get the fullness of the love of God that Jesus is looking for? No. 
uh, Jesus tells them in, in John 5, you search the scriptures because you think you find eternal life. And they were right about that. Yeah. But he says, these are they that speak of me. And guess what? They're going to crucify him. And they missed him. Mm. All right, your turn to read. Ah, okay. Uh, now, having been questioned by the Pharisees <laughs> as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, well, behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. They were looking for an outward material, tear up the Romans, get it by toe, have people bring us stuff, kind of kingdom. And Jesus said, no, that's not the way it's going to be. It's in you. You can't see it. It's spiritual. And God's territory for this kingdom is not uh, earthly territory in that sense. It's heart territory. Yeah. Second coming foretold. And he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you won't see it. They will say to you, look here, or look here. Do not go away, and do not run after them. For just as the lightning, when it flashes out of the one part of the sky, shines to the other of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things, be rejected by this generation, and just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it will also in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, and they were drinking, and they were buying, and they were selling, and they were planting, and they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. So um, let's just stop right there for just a minute. Um, he's, he's got a couple of illustrations about the fact that, uh, and there, there are two ways. Let me just throw this out there. Yep. Uh, there's, there's, there's the figurative way which it comes against Jerusalem in judgment. And it's going to come, and the people aren't going to be ready because they hadn't listened to the signs. And then there's going to be the big, the big one that Matthew breaks up into two different parts in Matthew 24. Uh, same <coughs> basic thing. People just are, are oblivious. And next thing you know, boom, there it is. And once again, he's talking to people who are expecting one thing. Mm -hmm. So once again, he's also relating this in terms and ways in which at, from their level of knowledge... Mm -hmm. where he's launching from, right? Yes. So he's talking to them. Messianic kingdom stuff. They're looking for something. Some of them won't last. Some no. of them won't last until that day. Some mm -hmm. will. They won't see. So it's, you know, there's, I think there's some, there's not a necessarily always a specific event, but the fact of this son of man was mm -hmm. a Jerusalem second coming. Mm -hmm. It could even be his death, burial, and resurrection. You know, there's a lot of different ways. Things. But the point yeah. is, is that, Our own personal death. Yeah, when God acts. When he's there. There's not this buildup always. Yeah, there's and you not better this, be ready. And yeah. And you better be ready. Yep. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will burn it. That's the key right there. Yeah. That's the key right there. Have you lost it to God or are you still trying to hang on to it? I tell you, on that night, there will be two in one bed, and one will be taken, and another will be left. There will be two women grinding in the same place, one will be taken, the other will be left. Two, and this is in brackets, I've got yeah. it, you probably don't even have it. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other will be left. Whether it's there in the original text or not, it says the same thing. And answering, they said to him, where, Lord? And he said to them, where the body is, also the vultures will be gathered. So. I think, and again, from what yeah. you said, it, it could be other things that you can apply to this. I think he's talking about the fall of Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and okay, so he uses some things here that later he'll use for, his se for the second coming, if you will. It's the same principle. It's yeah. okay to use the same thing, talking about in principle the same thing. Well, especially when, I mean, when you use such big cosmic language to talk about judgment, mm -hmm. then when you go to talk about actual cosmic changes in the... Mm -hmm. You're going to use the same language. Why? Yeah, because, because, well, there's only so much you can use. You're right. And what's going to happen on a, if you will, a lesser scale will one day happen on the grand scale. So using language that sort of takes you to the, to the big one is not inappropriate at all. Yeah. And I think Jerusalem is a, one of your best 
ways of looking at this. Vultures can be translated eagles. Which would have represented Rome. Got him on the little staff. You know, but the main point, once again, right. the main point is the discipleship principle of seeking your life and losing it, right? If you want to be a part of this kingdom when it comes, when it grows, when it matures, when it comes into fruition, follow me by losing your life. Mm-hmm. You will gain life by losing it. And if you try to gain life, like with wealth, if you try to gain wealth and trying to gain reward here on earth, you'll lose it. Yeah. Destruction of Jerusalem. You got stuff in or around Jerusalem, yeah. and you want to keep it. You're not going to be looking for signs to get out of there and leave it all behind. But if you're looking at God and He tells you, you know, here's what you need to know, and you need to get out, you're leaving. Yep. Yep. So there you go. Luke 17 and Luke 18:19 is really what we're doing. Is they're going to keep being more parables and more teachings leading us up to. He's on his way to Jerusalem, mm-hmm. up to the triumphal entry. Then we'll get into his last mm-hmm. week. Because these are the things. If you don't get them whole mission for you is going to be a failure. Yep. And this kingdom is not of this world. It's don't try to take principles from Mm -hmm. the world and try to apply it to Jesus because it's always flipped. Mm -hmm. It's always flipped. So anyway, we love you. Yes, we do. God bless.